Hello everybody. So we are here to do a couple different things today with these hives. Uh, we are going to start a mite treatment and to help with the wasp, hornet, and yellow jacket issue that's going to be coming up very soon. We are also going to add some entrance reducers. Uh, I'm going to add the entrance reducer first to this hive. And these are some homemade ones, way cheaper than just buying them. And I'm just going to slip this entrance reducer right in here. And what that entrance reducer is doing is exactly what it sounds like. It's reducing the opening of the hive so that if a robbing yellow jacket or a mouse or anything tries to get into the hive, they can only get in through that little space now. They don't have that whole hive front anymore. So the entrance has been reduced. The bees have a much smaller area to guard and it makes their guard duties much easier. So I started a video a couple weeks ago when I added these second boxes to these hives and my phone overheated and shut off. So I'm actually going to splice that video on adding the second boxes in right now. Hello everybody. So today I'm going to get in both of these hives and by now I should have mated laying queens in both hives and the frame should be drawn out enough that I'm going to attempt to add a second box to both of these hives here. So I have an empty box here and an empty box here. Both boxes have blank foundation, no drawn comb on them. So I'm going to checker up a couple uh, frames that have some brood on them and hopefully find the queen. If I do find the queen, she's also going to move to the top box. And by doing that, it will help encourage the bees to move up into the new box and start drawing the comb out up there. Oftentimes, beekeepers, they just slap on the new box with the blank foundation and then they come back in a few weeks and find that their new boxes have not been touched at all and they don't know why. Well, you have to have an incentive to get those bees to go up if you expect them to draw out that comb quick. So that's why we move brood frames up, or you can also use honey frames if that's what you prefer. I like to move brood, brood frames up because that guarantees worker bees and nurse bees will also go up. So we're going to get at it here. Okay, so I have a frame of brood here, and I have the small frame that I used for the queen cells and I'm going to move both of them into this top box. So of course in order to do that I have to pop two frames out of this top box which are going to be these two here and I'm going to checker them in like so. And then the process is fairly simple. I just set the new box on top and try to square it up as good as I can here. The brood frame will just slide right in. And so will this one for now. I'm going to pinch the frames together. Put my inner cover back on. Got a spider nest in there. Put my outer cover back on. And that hive is done. Okay, now that that video has played, we're back to the hive here. And I have not been in these boxes since I added the second deep. So we're gonna see what we got going in here. So when I added these deeps, I moved two frames up. And honestly, it doesn't look like these bees have expanded in this hive much past the two frames. So they've started drawing out another one here. Are there any eggs in it? 
Nope, so they've started drawing out that frame. <laughs> this frame was a medium frame, and they've completely extended it and made it a deep frame. I'm going to leave it like that. No point in fixing it now. But it's a beautiful brood frame. That's all brood on there. So I'm just going to drop that right back in place. And then we'll jump over to another one that was blank when I first put it on here. And this one is drawn out just on one side, but it has a lot of brood, a lot of eggs in there. So that's nice. So they're starting to expand. So I cannot get power out here for my oxalic acid vaporizer, so we have to use Epigard. Uh, that's my choice for treatment when I can't use oxalic acid vapor. So I have these little Epigard trays, and pretty simple to use. I am just going to peel the foil back. The instructions say to leave the foil on. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to actually set it right in the center here. And I just leave that on there for the first round of treatment until all of the gel in the tray is completely gone. Now there's not enough space to add my inner cover, so I'm adding a feeding rim. They're all homemade. They just give, give the lid about an extra half an inch. They have a hole right here so the bees can come and go through the top. Then you can put your cover back on. And I am officially doing a mite treatment on my bees. So the bees will still be able to come and go. There's enough space up here. There's a lip so the bees can come and go. Uh, they can get to that apigard. They have an entrance reducer down there. So this hive is done. I'm going to jump over to the other one real quick. And we will do to get through this hive quick before the phone overheats because it's like 84 out. It's just ridiculous. It's not even 10 o'clock, I don't believe yet. We'll throw in this entrance reducer. The bees won't like it at first, but they'll grow to appreciate it in the end. So there's the entrance reducer. Let's see if this hive has done any better with its second box. They've expanded a little bit more. I'm not going to pull out the frames because I'm hot and I'm in a hurry. But they have about five frames drawn down here. Two of them, of course, I brought up from the bottom. So they've drawn out three more frames. I'm going to peel back the foil on this Abigard tray. I'm going to set it right in the center there, right above where those brood frames are at. Put on my feeder rim. And I am going to close this one right back up. Sometimes your hive inspection is just that quick. Thanks for watching, guys.